Philip Parker is a central heating engineer, a gas fitter. He works for himself and usually by himself. I do all aspects of gas, but this is probably the most common thing that I do is uh, installing central heating. He's been doing this job for a long time. He's highly skilled, but this work also needs good literacy, numeracy and ICT skills. What we're doing this afternoon, we're going to uh, a house to convert into two flats, one upstairs and one downstairs. We're going to see him use these life skills as he completes a typical job. Electricians are already here. And you'll have a chance to go online and develop similar skills for yourself. Look out for the web address later in the programme. First job is the boiler. We're going to put the boiler onto the wall. We've got a frame here. We can hang the boiler, hang the frame. This is just ideal. Good flow rate, good reliable boiler. High efficiency condensing. All central heating jobs start with a boiler. It's where the gas comes in and where the hot water comes from. These are what we're going to be wearing. These are the safety part of the job. These are the goggles. These are great. Straight over prescription glasses. This is the dust mask. There'll be a lot of dust with this, so I'll put this on, and I think you'd be better standing back then. Right, and away we go. And fitting it requires one of the biggest tools in his bag. I did my training. It was at the Gasport Training Centre in, uh, in Manchester, not far from Old Trafford. Certainly makes your arms ache. It was a five-year apprenticeship, which was split at six months in Manchester in a training centre, and then it would be three months working with, uh, with, with fitters. You know, because there's nothing like hands-on practice. Right, well, that's the flu done. That's taken nearly two hours out of us, you know. But it's all ready now. Whoever said this job was glamorous, I don't know where they were coming from. It was you. <laughs> Well, sometimes it is glamorous, sometimes it isn't. What are you doing now? That's it now. I think it's time for a cup of tea now, don't you? Break time, a time to read up on all the sales stuff that bombards him. It's literacy skills, the ability to separate fact from opinion, that helped him decide which boiler to go for. I get advertising every day, you know, new products, manufacturer's products, boiler products, van insurance, any sort of insurance. We get it all through the post. Yeah, well this company, these have been producing boilers for 150 years. This is just a little bit of what they say about their boilers. We're consistently leading the way with the most advanced range of energy efficient, user and environmentally friendly products on the market. We are perfectly placed to be the first to meet the new challenges in the high efficiency heating, but that's only their opinion. Well, the next job is now is to just run some pipe work off the boiler. Clean the pipes. And then I'm going to just uh, solder two 90 degree elbows underneath so they come off the boiler. Right, light the lamp. Plenty of flux on it. This makes the solder on. Doing this job for so long, he's a bit of a traditionalist. I use the, I use the ordinary flux site. A lot of these plumbers and heating engineers now, they use the acid-based type stuff, but I never do because it's corrosive. Tried and tested. Acid-based fluxes, it means you don't have to clean the pipework. Is that because you're old-fashioned? That's because I've been doing it for 40 years and I don't like acid. <laughs> this is a smear of Boss White. As our old instructor always used to say, a good wetting is always better than a good drying. <laughs> uh, 
what do I enjoy about it? I enjoy the variation of work. Because no matter what you do, no job is ever, is ever the same. It might be five radiators in a house, but Mrs Smith won't be like Mrs Jones you've just left or Mr. I like that sort of thing. I like the, I like the crack with you get with the customer as well. I enjoy that type of the, the banter you get with the customer as well. I enjoy all that. There's some parts we don't enjoy when you're working in a roof space and it's 110 degrees up there and you're running pipes across the roof space. That's not much fun and you can't breathe because of the foam in the roof space. Next up are the radiators. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting job. You get to meet the general public. It's good and it's, uh, it pays well as well. So it's all bonuses. I've never been short of work yet, and I've been doing it for 40 years. I worked for British Gas to start with, well, it was North West Gas at the time. But you can't, you can't worry about this, you know. You just hope that the phone's going to ring. And it seems to, it seems to ring all the time. And if you do a good job, it's passed on word of mouth. Every room is different, and Phil has to work out what sort of radiator he needs to heat each one to the required temperature. To do that, he uses numeracy skills. He begins by measuring the room. This is going to be the living room for the property. What we're going to do now, we're going to work out the radiator size required to keep this room at a temperature of roughly 21 degrees. If the radiator's too small, obviously it won't heat the room. If the radiator's too big in this room, It'll just keep the boiler cycling in and out, which will use excessive fuel, which is not what we want to do. 2.5 metres. Right. We've got 4 metres length by 250 height, which gives us 10 metres, by 3.8 metres width, which gives us 38 cubic metres. That's the room size. This is a Mears wheel. This is a, this is a domestic heating calculator. We've got the length of the room and we're working on an insulated wooden floor and we've got a length of four metres. We've got the width of the room, which is 380. So we push that round to where four, the four metre length joins the 380 width. Now we want the room temperature, which is this is the lounge area, roughly 21 degrees, with the height of the room, which was 2.5. We're working on solid brick walls and we have two outside walls. So that gives us uh, the heat requirements in kilowatts of just slightly over 2.2, which, which on this reading is roughly 2.25. So that's the, that's the size of radiator we require. Right, that's that side connected up. The final job linking the boiler and all the radiators brings a problem. Here the floor joist is in the way and he can't drill under the floor. We need to come through roughly there, but we're coming through the centre of the joist, so I'm going to have to put a, put a hole there and hope it isn't too far out. These are old houses. It's on the same line as that, and that has missed the joist. But that one hasn't missed the joist. So I think when they built these houses 100 years ago, they probably didn't have the technology to put them exactly square like they do now. So the joist is actually running slightly into the middle of the room. This radiator pipe doesn't want to go through the floor. Yeah, what we need to do now is just put a slight kick on this. So when it comes up through the floor, it's running nice and square into the valve. Slight kick. The pipe bender sorts out the problem. Just put a slight kick on it, just to... Easy if you've got the right tools. Tap the olive oil. Nip up. That doesn't look too bad. Then it's downstairs to run the pipe work from the boiler to the radiators. Right. 
there's no ceiling in the downstairs flat, so that makes this job easier. But it's hard running copper pipe through the joists. The solution? Use something that bends. We've got to drill through the joist that way. And there's no way where we can feed copper through. So plastic is a very good substitute. Right. Well, it's flexible, it doesn't freeze, and it's easy to work with. And at the moment, it's probably cheaper than copper. That's all he'll do today, but at home he's straight onto the computer. Corgi is the Council of Registered Gas Installers. They oversee all gas installers. If you have any problems, you go to Corgi. If they've got problems, they'll come to you. Every registered gas central heating engineer has to load information about every job they do into the gas installer's website. This piece, this will take five minutes, no longer than that, yeah. And then there's a charge involved for it. It's just one of the ICT skills he's had to learn. This should be done within 24 hours of each job being done, but there's that many being, in, being put onto the websites now. They'll it, give you 14 days to do this. We like to get them done as soon as possible. So if you don't mind, I'll just press on with this now. <laughs> Next day, and the job's almost finished. The radiators are piped up, and all that's left to do is check the gas compression and then commission the system. These boilers are factory set, but we do like to check them, make sure we've got a good standing pressure of gas, and make sure we've got the, the recommended uh, working pressure on the, on the gas. So that's, that's the most important part of the boiler. Right, well, what we're going to do now, we're going to commission the boiler, we're going to check the gas pressures on this, to make sure we've got enough gas coming from the meter, to supply the needs of the boiler. Place the gauge onto the gas valve. Now the boiler fires into life. This is basically for giving us the gas pressure and testing the boiler. Right, now we've got the boiler on test. This is working at full capacity. What we need to achieve here is 18 and a half millibars water gauge on the, on the, on the manometer. So we've got 16, 16 millibars there, and we've got 24 millibars down the bottom. We add them together, we've got 40 millibars, divide by into half, so we've got 20 millibars, actual working pressure that is. Right, that's up and running now. That's it, another one finished.